Hey everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog, and you've probably heard of Affinity Design coming out for the iPad as well as for Mac, especially with all the news of Adobe Photoshop coming out sometime in 2019 for the iPad, which seems to be directly related to the release of Affinity for the iPad. But today we're going to take a brief look at Affinity Designer for the iPad, but more so I want to know what you guys want to see. As I test this out over the next few days in the next week or so, I want to test out what you guys are interested in and any questions or features you want to see covered in detail and I will work on that and get it out to you early next week but any questions you have just leave those down in the comments and I'll try to answer everyone in the next video uh, and fun fact we are using the new leather sleeve for the MacBook Pro as this backdrop um, not that it matters but it's just interesting okay so when you open it up you do have your splash screen and this looks like a general photo design app it looks like perhaps Photoshop would look in general, uh, but nothing new. It looks nice, it looks clean, and you have your options. So you click on your project and you can see it looks again like a standard photo editor. You have your personas up top and these are gonna allow you to have different tools and different options. Basically, this is the mode that you're on. So the default is the vector. So anything you're working with vector are going to be things that you can magnify without losing resolution. You know, when you have vector products or images, you can zoom in all the way and it will always look great. Of course, it does have to um, adjust a little bit, but it will get there. Then we have the pixel persona. And finally, we have the export persona. So on the left hand side, you have all of your options and these are pretty standard. You do have your selection tools, your crop. Uh, pencil, fill, things such as that. And these allow you to quickly edit anything that you are working on. And of course, this does have Apple Pencil support for getting really fine details. But the app in general utilizes touch. That's what makes this really great. Um, instead of touch being an inhibiting factor on the iPad, uh, this uses it to its advantage. Of course, multi-touch to drag, uh, to go around. When you have a tool selected, you can drag around to adjust um, and refine what you are working on. Over on the right hand side, when you have more options such as layers, you have the ability to use your multi-touch um, as well as just touch gestures in general to select layers. As you can see, you can swipe over on a layer um, as well as dragging them around, stuff like that. So this app is really designed specifically for the iPad and its goal is to incorporate touch as well as the Apple Pencil into something that's really intuitive, powerful, creative, and low cost compared to Adobe's products. It's a really cool looking application for seriously cool creative projects that really takes in kind of the Illustrator and Photoshop approach for your vector projects or for your photo editing needs. And it's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of it so far. But like I said, leave comments to what you want to see, what features you want me to cover, and I'll get that out to you next week. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm excited to test this out further.